Hey everybody, welcome back. So today we're going to take a look at uh, one of my latest acquisitions from uh, the Mosin Crate. Wow, the name just left me. Um, and they had, or he had, uh, some of those Polish P64s, also a lot of times uh, incorrectly referred to as a Polish Makarov, even though it's not a Makarov. However, disassembly of this weapon is still the same. So Alden over at the Mosin Crate had some of these P64s that he was selling. Um, I think they were all dealer's choice with the exception of one of them, which was a matte finish, which he offered at a little bit of a discount. But uh, the dealer's choice ones were, I believe, 419 and you got the pistol, two mags, holster, and cleaning rod. Um, with He stated that the holsters were in fair condition, but from what I saw in the video, uh, those P64s looked to be in really nice condition. And in my mind, I thought, well, hey, you know, this is something really cool from Cold War era to kind of add to my growing collection of Cold War pistols. Um, for instance, uh, my CZ-82, you may not really call that a Cold War pistol, but then as well as um, my Walther PP that I have. Uh, two very nice pistols. Actually, the, the Walther PP that I got from Centerfire Systems is just absolutely gorgeous pistol. Um, I really do like this one. But one of the neat things that this P64 shares uh, in conjunction with these other two pistols that I just showed you is the disassembly process. It's pretty much exactly the same. Uh, the Walther PP is slightly different, but you know that's not a big deal. Um, but without further ado, um, oh, and so Alden was selling these for four hundred nineteen dollars, I believe, before shipping and tax. So without further ado, let's dive off in it and let's see what I got from Alden. I'm very curious to see the condition of this um, but oftentimes I usually don't worry at all with what comes from the Mosin crate because his stuff is usually a little bit higher quality uh, than what you get elsewhere because he's very um, selective in what he sells. For starters this holster looks super nice. There's a copy of his FFL. There is my cleaning rod. So let's set this box aside. Of course, these did get imported by Century Arms. This one, as you can hear, <laughs> that holster needs a little bit of conditioning. But it's, right now, looks like it's in phenomenal shape. Um, looks like it might need some new stitching here on the bottom, uh, which is perfectly fine. I know some people close by that do some leather work. Um, so I will likely be getting this to them. So real quick, just opening up the inside flap, you kind of see this, some of these, I guess these Polish stamps here, a lot of it, you know, were actually X'd out. Maybe it was issued and reissued and turned back in. I'm not sure. Um, I may put a picture up here in the top left so you guys take a quick look at that. Let's see a little bit better. Let's pull one of these magazines out. It is marked 06704. Now it's very likely that these magazines will not match the pistol. If they do, hey, that's awesome. If they don't, hey, it's not the end of the world. It's not like this is a, a P08 or something. Um, oh, I didn't show you the cleaning rod. You know, standard fare. Appears to be in good surplus condition. No issues there. Um, so, really nothing else to speak of on that one. But let's take a look at this P64. So here is the P64. This one was, in particular was manufactured in 1968. Of course that nice Circle 11 logo. Of course the slide and frame do match. By the way, I did mention a while back, I did a short video. Um, if you didn't get in on the ones at the Mosin Crate, uh, Atlantic Farms had these. They may still have them for $399. But I opted for uh, what Alden had because like I said, it's, he's always a little bit more particular about his offerings. Um, looks quite nice. You will notice 9mm on the side, not to be confused with 9mm Luger. This is of course a 9mm Makarov pistol. Let's do a safety check. Make sure this is indeed unloaded. Magazine is unloaded. Check the chamber. I probably won't be able to pull that back without the magazine in there. Or maybe it was just a little stiff. It is indeed unloaded. Let's go ahead and drop that mag. Um, grips had a little bit of scuffing, um, but it doesn't look terrible. 
course you need to see the all the proofs and stamps on the side as well as that P64 designation on the slide. Of course I will be, you'll see pictures up here in the top left. Now, one thing I did like about these is the very, very uh, tiny import stamp. Uh, this one in particular says Blitzkrieg, Clay, Michigan. Uh, so this is not a CAI import, um, but overall the pistol looks phenomenal. Rifling I can see is excellent down inside that barrel. And I mean, just the bluing looks great. There's a little bit of wear here, a little bit of wear here, that back here. It's likely holster wear. I'm not really concerned. Also, you see it on these on this other side here. I know it's hard to see it, but I'll try to insert pictures where you guys can see this. Of course, two-piece um, grip design with the mag release on the bottom. So let's go ahead and now one thing I wanted to show you real quick. So there's the two magazines. This is, of course, a looks like HK 13480 the magazine that, the, that was in it is Electro Pencil 13480 but the one that came in the holster is 06704 so this one doesn't match but this one does um, now similarly of course all these guns are unloaded similarly um, when you look at it by design of the CZ82 you know they're really not that similar however the takedown or field strip is very similar um, so for instance, you know, you'll lock the slide back, pull your trigger guard down, pull your slide back up and let it ride forward and that essentially fill strips your CZ82. Similarly on your P64, um, might be best to do this with a magazine inserted. I've never actually done one of these before so I'm new to this. So let's do that. Let's pull this down and hold it down. Pull back up and forward. While my finger is stuck right between the trigger guard and the trigger. <laughs> that did not feel good. But you can tell these guns were shot and used very little. Um, it does appear as though it was shot at some point. I can see the bore is a little dirty, but I'll insert a picture of the bore. It looks great. I mean, I don't see any issues there. Um, internals of the upper slide look good. And you see a little bit of wear back here. It has been shot some, that's that's for sure. But it doesn't appear like it's you know, wore out or shot out or anything like that. So, let's see if we can get this back on here without me mashing my finger again. There we go. And then just lock your trigger guard back up. Well, I don't know if that was hanging on the trigger just then or what happened. That was weird. But anyway, very nice little pistol. Um, I will say this it is a single slash double action. I've heard. And many people have said this already, the double action trigger pulls on these is absolutely horrendous. However, some people have been commenting that a, uh, I want to say a spring kit from Wolf Springs will greatly improve these in terms of that double action trigger pull. Um, and I may try that out. Um, wow. Yeah, that is, that's a horrendous double action trigger pull. Oh great. I have the magazine in there. Let's lower that. Single's not terrible at all. But double action, yes. <laughs> it is um, absolutely horrendous. <laughs> uh gentleman over at the Hobo Factory, <laughs> he said that he had one of these, he got rid of it. <laughs> I can see why on the double action. But if you're into like trying to get your hands on some of the Cold War stuff. That's certainly a nice little addition to uh, help complete your collection. Um, but yeah, for 420 bucks, I thought this was pretty, pretty nice, especially with a pretty decent holster. Um, of course, you know, we gotta get some of the stitching fixed, but other than that, I mean, this is entirely serviceable. 
it just looks like it never was oiled well or anything or conditioned I mean of course you do have that small spot down in there to put your cleaning rod which it's leather as well believe it or not um, I don't know if I want to keep the gun in there beside it but you know just for grins we're just gonna put it all back in here once I put it back the right way and just drop that little pistol in there like so I say like so There you have it. Stitching needs to be reworked on it, but like I said, I know a, I know a guy that does leather work in my area. Ooh, I just noticed something. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. Looks like that belt strap is uh, just about gone. So I may have to get another piece sewn on. Have another piece made and sewn on and possibly riveted in. I might be able to get by with just sewing it. But anyway, if I can find one of these holsters cheap, I may just get me another holster. But if not, then I'll see if I can get this one repaired just so that this is complete like I like it. But anyway, um, you know, like I said, just an interesting addition to go with some of the other Cold War style pistols. Um, just because, I don't know, I guess just because I kind of like these things. You know, something neat to have you know um, of course so what would also fit in with these would be some of those um, VZ 50s VZ 70s kind of fall sort of within that range uh, just some really cool uh, really cool pistols to have uh, if you like that sort of thing if you don't well that's perfectly fine too everybody has different things that they like and don't like um, which of course these two are chambered in 9 by 18 Makarov and this is 32 ACP uh, this nice little Walther PP which is I really like that one but the finish on this um, on this P64 looks really good um, I do not know why this PL AMW is on the slide I have no idea why that's there um, but it's there nonetheless but you know the pistol looks great otherwise no major rust areas nothing like that you know like I said definitely some wear on the slide uh, which is typical of any sort of leather holster that you use that's always going to happen um, it looks quite nice finish wise very close to to my Walther PP here so anyway uh, stay tuned guys for more content on the way uh, of course um, I'm always in the market for mill serps, and of course, I will be putting out more restoration videos because uh, there is I have just a million and one projects, and that sort of stuff, of course, as you know, is what really takes time uh, for the content. It takes a lot of setup time, uh, a lot of editing time, just in general, just uh, restoring those old projects. Um, but there's definitely more stuff on the way, and as always. Um, you know, make sure you hit that bell notification on my channel. Uh, if I find any deals like this or anything else uh, that I'll try to throw out there to give you guys a heads up, maybe you might be in the market for it. You may be looking for it. You know, you may just see and think, "Hey, thank," or "Hey, you know, I think that's cool." Um, but I try to put stuff like that out there uh, so you guys can have a shot at deals and stuff like that too. Um, but anyway, as always, thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks everyone for your likes, your shares, your comments definitely grows the channel more than you and I know because nobody understands the YouTube algorithm. So anyway, thanks guys for watching and until next time, you guys have a great day.